Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. I am extremely excited to have you to listen to our podcast messages. We are trusting that the Holy Spirit will bless you. We're going to take you into a message in just a few minutes, amen, where I feel that God is going to give you insight, revelation, and wisdom through the teachings that the Lord has given us to present before you. If you want to get up with us on our website, our website is pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. It is my pleasure and my honor to bring this anointed message to you where I am preaching and teaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, giving God's people insight that will strengthen their spiritual walk, build their family, and put under their feet the enemy on every level. Now, sit back and enjoy this message. God bless you, my dear friend, and thank you for taking the time to listen to our podcast. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I praise you for your Holy Spirit, Father. And I thank you for the dream you just gave me, Lord God. I pray strongly, Father God, for the prophets. I pray strongly for those that are speaking the truth and how that many in the body of Christ are not ready nor prepared to receive it. Heavenly Father, as I share, I ask you to help me, Father God, to clearly articulate what I saw in a vision. To those that are coming on, this is Apostle Hopkins. What I normally don't do, very seldom ever have, is dreams that startle me. About two o'clock this morning, I was suddenly taken into a powerful, powerful vision. And what I'm talking about in the vision, it was a powerful dream of the church killing the prophets. And I just had this dream at 2 a.m. Saturday morning, July the 13th, 2024. And I'm going to share with you all what God showed me. Now, I say to you all right now, the dream startled me. I'm barely awoke. I just got up washed my face and shaved enough to halfway look presentable on this Facebook book live and YouTube as I share this. Hallelujah. I'm going to read out of the book of Matthews and for the ignorance of sometimes YouTube and them that can think that we're talking about the natural Jerusalem. We are not talking about the natural Jerusalem in Matthews 23, 37, nor are we making an anti-Semitic statement because what I'm about to share with you is a vision and a dream that God just gave me concerning the church. All at uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, in the King James Version first, and then also in the Berean study Bible. All Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, I'm speaking here of the church, not the natural Jerusalem. All Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. The Marian's Bible says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stone those sent to her, How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were unwilling. A few minutes ago before I woke up, God started me with a vision, and I want y'all to listen at this vision. In the vision, there was I and there was a young brother along with me. Now, this young brother that was along with me his, uh, his name was Ben. Now, years ago, there was a brother that went to my church, and Brother Ben was one of the most gentlest, kindest brothers that you ever want to meet. So Ben and I are sitting in this church service, and the service is a huge service, and there is a prophet that is preaching. In this vision, as Ben and I sat and watched this service, as the prophet begin to prophesy the truth. Ben and I watched the church's anger. We watched the church become enraged at this prophet that was speaking the truth. Now, I want to make it quite clear. 
This prophet was not a false prophet, but it did represent those that are speaking prophetic truth in such a time that we live, and I knew it. I'm within standing there, almost like I'm outside of a picture, I'm almost like Ezekiel, who was peering into the temple in the book of Ezekiel. Brother Ben and I, representing gentleness and kindness, Brother Ben, and I, as we stood there, I watched this as a preacher, as a prophet, was prophesied. Now listen at what they did to the prophets first. I watched them, the people, as the prophet began to make them mad, as the prophet began to make them angry in this vision. All of a sudden, I watched them have money in their hands, and the stronger the prophet would preach the truth, they would start exchanging how much they were going to give it. It looked like in some of their hands, it was large bills, large money. They were sitting in the pews, and the stronger that prophet would prophesy the truth, they would reduce more and more what they were going to give that prophet. They reduced it at such a degree until it looked like they were going to give that prophet nothing. They were trying to strangle him at that, that prophet economically. I say the word him, but I don't believe it represented uh, a male or female, it represented the prophet, the prophetic. I also watched the point leader of that church. I watched him get angry at that prophet telling the truth. I watched him get so angry, and I watched what looked like his henchmen. The women began to get angry at that prophet, and the, and the point leader became so mad with them and here, Brother Ben and I stood watching, helpless. I thought even in my own mind, God, why don't you kind of allow us? That was the thought when I woke up. Lord, why didn't you allow me to do something, to do something? And what I did, as I watched this happen, a prophet ran out of this great big church. And I wouldn't say it was a mega church, but it was a big gathering of what represented the church. The prophet began to run. The point leader looked at the prophet, and he said something to him in his anger, because he preached the truth. He told the truth at his church. The point leader, he was mad. Then we shifted into another place where the prophet ran to the rooftop of the church. I looked at the prophet, and I was in a spot almost like my nature is. Can I do something to help you, prophet? Can I do something to stop their anger? I turned to the prophet. I turned to the people. I turned to the church. And I said, this is not right. And was nothing I could do to stop the anger of the church and the truth of the prophet that God has sent. God sent this prophet, and it was nothing I could do. Then as the prophet ran from the rooftop of the church, they were chasing behind him. Then immediately, me and Ben appeared into a room where all the people were gathered. It looked like it was a banquet room that was attached to the church. All of a sudden, as we looked into the door, Brother Ben ran and pleaded for his life. I was startled at what I was seeing. What was I seeing? I was seeing the point leader and the people, male and female, stomping and beating and stomping this puppet. I stood there and I said, my God, you're going to kill him. You're going to kill the prophet. You're going to kill the prophet. And they stomped with anger. They stomped with rage at the prophet. And then all of a sudden, I woke up. I sat on the edge of my bed. I said, God, in the world, I'm not that dense in understanding dreams and visions. I said, God, I said, the church is getting ready to go out against the prophets like never before. Church, I will say to you that the prophets, there are prophets that are speaking the truth, male and female. And church, some of you that do not want to serve God, some of you that want to have your own way, some of you, your religious leaders, and those that are your people that you call 
your apostles, your prophets, your Bible, they hate what the true prophets are saying. And they first went after the prophets' finances. And then they went after the prophets' life. This was the most horrendous dream that I have ever had in my life. I've never had a dream about the church hurting the prophetic. I never had a dream of the church being angry and full of rage at the truth of the prophet. This morning, I got here, it's on this Facebook Live, and I shared this with you. I am going to put this up again on YouTube because I haven't linked them two together. I am a man, I am a man that, that Evelyn and I are trying to live right in our season years. We're actually trying to do the work of God and go home with the Lord. But God showed me this morning, this horrendous thing that I saw, the congregation, it that was the prophet was prophesying the truth to, got so mad, they followed the blind leader. They followed a leader that was actually corrupt. When I looked in the eyes of that leader, of the, that congregation, that leader was angry. His staff was angry. The men and women that chased him, and it was the men that caught him, they were angry, and they pursued that prophet with such hate. I know why gentle Brother Ben was in that dream with me. In my church, Brother Ben, years ago, I love Brother Ben to this day. He was the most kindest gentlest, sweetest brother in the Lord that I met. Brother Ben had a good heart. He would do evil and would not want to watch evil done to anybody. As I stood there, I realized the condition of the church we're in today. Many of you don't want to hear the truth. You're dabbling in your witchcraft. You're dabbling in your lust and your perversion. You're switching the gospel up and thinking that God is going to be pleased with it. And you all are completely angry. You're angry at every apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, or pastor that is speaking the truth. And first, you will try to strangle them out with finances. Then you will try to kill them out physically. My dear friend, they destroyed that prophet. But God judge them for it. The condition that we are in right now, my dear friends, and I say this, there are many of you that are great prophets out there. Y'all are prophesying the truth. Are you hearing me? Y'all are prophesying the truth. I say to you prophetic prophets that are speaking the word of the Lord to the church, don't stop. Don't give up on it. Are you hearing me? And what you're doing for God is effective. It clearly reminded me of this verse. In the book of Matthews, chapter 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem, church. Oh, Jerusalem, church. You who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. And in the and Matthews, it was the religious leaders that were spared in the death and the killing of true prophetic words. God said he sent these prophets among us, and many of us are mad. How often God said, I have longed to gather your children together. God had longed to gather a generation of our people together. I'm going to say this to the church, and I know in hermeneutics, I know that this Matthew 23, 37 was Jesus prophesying to natural Jerusalem. I know he was talking to the seed of Abraham. But I use this analogy to equate what I saw in that vision. Many of you are wondering why your children, your generation are not gathered. You're wondering why they have not come and served the Lord. It's because you are serving God in a corrupt manner. It is because many of the preachers are bound and caught by lust and by perversion, and by money, and by manipulation, and by control. And that's why your generation 
Many have not gathered unto the Lord because they have not seen God in some of the things you do. Jesus prophesied in Matthew 23, 37. He said, you kill you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I had longed to gather your children as, as you can gather her chicks under her wings. But the cause of the, your children not being gathered, the cause of the sin that the church is doing, the sin that the church is approving, is because you were not willing to be gathered. You were not willing to be changed by God. That dream was powerful. I thank you all for taking the time to listen to me. And I'm sure there will be some because Facebook and YouTube are loaded with skeptics. It's loaded with critics. But personally, I really don't care. But I say to you, you that are hearing me, first I say to the real prophets out there, prophesy, cast out devils, heal the sick, preach the truth, and don't even fear for your life. I say to those out there, amen that you're going to see more people turn on the real prophetic people that are speaking against their sin, speaking against their greed, their lust, their bondage. And first, they will attack the prophet's finances. They will try to take and see if they can't finance them. Like, cause money and shifting of things that would keep their natural survival. So that's what happened to the prophet that was preaching. The church changed lower and lower what they were going to give the prophet, thinking that would shut the prophet's mouth. But their finances did not. They withholding finances did not stop that wild prophet that was prophesying the truth. Then finally they got so mad under the leadership of their controlling, manipulating point leader. I don't know whether he was an apostle Pastor, teacher, whatever he called himself, that corrupt beast got his henchmen, those under him, to uh, run after the prophet, to chase him out of the building, to chase him to, what they took him to? They took him to the church's banquet room. They took him to the place where the church gathers to fellowship and eat dinner. They took him to the place where dinner was served where brothers, brethren, bread, bread, in that banquet room where true brethren were supposed to break bread. And before they stopped the prophet, they beat the prophet. They killed the prophet. In church, you're going to see many who are supposed to be breaking bread together stop with rage and anger and kill the prophet. Now look, this is Apostle Hopkins. I hardly ever come on Facebook with anything like this. That dream just happened to me, and I got up immediately under the instruction of God, and he told me to tell it, to tell this prophetic word. Prophets, true prophets, don't you back up. But they are going to attack your finances. And some of you, they're going to try to kill you. Whether it's physically, whether it's spiritually, whether it's economically, they are going to try to kill you. Now, I'm explaining myself with the interpretation of this dream as clear as I can for the ignorant. Because there are some who, who are not spiritual enough to discern real truth and ignorant enough to not understand it and begin to criticize what their eternal minds don't understand. Church, we're in a season right now and a greater season coming where they will try to kill and destroy the true messengers of God. Heavenly Father, you startled me this morning with this powerful dream that intruded into my sleep strongly than ever before. It was like I was between sleep and woke. And as I rose up on my feet, you told me to say it. You told me to share it. Heavenly Father, 
I repent of the sins, the sins of a people, God. Lord God, we come before you asking your forgiveness when we, or the church, have ignored prophetic warnings. When you have sent your prophets, male and female, I don't care what their gender is, when you have sent your prophetic people to warn the church, to turn the church, Lord God, I repent of anything in me, on our doing. I ask you, oh God, I ask you, oh God, save us, deliver us. I pray that this prophetic word that I'm speaking right now will cause many leaders that have gone astray from the truth of God, who know that you have been angry and mad at true prophetic people, and you have set your henchmen after them. You have called your intercessors to pray witchcraft prayers against them. You have called your elders and leaders uh, to try to step on them. You told your finance committee to not give them anything. You come at their finances. You come at their life, and you chase them because you're wicked. I pray that you repent. I pray that many of the leaders that God have given an opportunity, he would have used you mightily to gather his sheep unto him, to gather his hen unto his arms, to gather your children under his arms. But you would kill the messengers because of your lust for notoriety. My dear friends on Facebook, on YouTube, that hear me with this word, Pray for us. Because as I said, I know how this society rolls now. It only feeds on hype. It only feeds on clicks. It only feeds on what's trending. And you're angry at anybody that will tell the truth. Anybody that will live righteous. Anybody that will live moral. This society, and I'm talking about the church. This society claws back and hides under the cloak of who am I to judge. I'll tell you who you are to judge matters. You are ambassadors of the living God. You are the church of the living God, which is supposed to represent the holiness and the righteousness of God. That's who you are. So you'll be angry even at me for telling this vision. Keep your eyes open, saints. If what I saw is not the truth, then it will come to nothing. But if what I saw in the vision, and I know that it is the truth, I know it is the truth, I know it is the truth, you're going to see many of the true prophets that are speaking on these airwaves, on this internet, that many of the true prophets that you know are going to be attacked by bigger name ministries. Going to be attacked are those that have the influence in the modern day church. Those prophets, male and female, are going to be attacked worse than they ever been attacked. I say this to you prophets out there. I saw this in a vision. I claim to be nothing. I claim not to be a great prophet. I claim not to be a great visionary. My dear friend, that open thing that I saw in that dream, God wanted me to tell your prophets, it's coming. You're going to see persecution, true prophets, like you've never seen in your life. They're going to attack your resources. And when that doesn't work, they're going to come at you physically. Because the false church, the church that's infiltrated by witchcraft and leaders that are pure perverts, are angry at true prophets. I say to the real pastors and real leaders out there, it's about time that somebody speaks up and you stop taking a hit for these dogs in sheep's clothing that are living nothing, to have all, that are validating all kinds of perversion and sin. It's time that you real fivefold ministers of the gospel come out of hiding and call things what they are. These prophets, young and old, they are prophesying under the inspiration of the Almighty. They are prophesying under the word of God. It is time that some senior apostles, you senior leaders, stand up and stand beside these prophets and say they're telling the truth. 
say that what they are prophesying and exposing, it's the hand of God doing it. Instead, you're silent. Instead, you power around so you won't upset or shake some of your pals that are corrupt, that are greedy dogs, that are whoremongers, that have perverted and raped in the church, that have seduced and destroyed the testimony of God in the church because you didn't want to upset the apple cart. Well, look, I'm out. To you that are listening to me, that care anything about Brother Ivory and Sister Evelyn, pray for us. I'm going to say it again. To you that are hearing what I'm saying, and if Evelyn and I care anything in the world, if you care anything in the world about Evelyn and I, all I ask you to do is pray for us. I did not ask God to pull me and bend in that dream like that. I did not go to bed thinking about nothing but a good nap and waking up the next day praying with people. That's all I had on my mind. And this powerful, intrusive, scary, heartbreaking, sad dream came to me. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening to me. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. A brother and Lord. Well, praise God. I trust that you enjoyed that message. Well, look, my dear friend, this is Apostle Hopkins. Amen. And I'm getting ready to get on up out of here. Look, if you want to sow a donation and bless us, you can do it on our website at pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. Or you can go to our cash app and make a cash app donation to General Ivory Hopkins. It's just simply General Ivory Hopkins. It has been my pleasure, amen, to bring to you the things pertaining to kingdom, life, and family. So I trust these podcasts blesses you, and I'm going to catch you guys in another teaching. God bless. Bye-bye.